It's going to be a great one. Quick, real quick. Hey. Mikey. Mikey Domagala, how's it going? What's up? It's a pleasure meeting you, man. Man, nice to meet you too, man. So this Cut the Deck podcast, of course, we stream it on IGTV. It's not on iTunes everywhere, but we're looking to get it. But this is Mikey Domagala here with official NBA buzz. And what I'm now noticing is that you're big time. Like, you're a big deal. So how does that feel? Yeah, man. Listen, it, it feels great because I put in the work to get here. It's not like I, I had a silver spoon in my mouth doing this stuff or I was handed it. You know, I started NBA Buzz back in 2012 and developed it to just about 3 million followers total. And uh, I have my own show, Inside Buzz. I'm wearing the merch. Yeah. I've got the banner in the background where I do interviews with NBA players. And, hey, it's just all a work in progress every day with the great sport of basketball. So, so who was Mikey Domagala before NBA Buzz? What were you into? What were you doing? <laughs> well, I'm only 21, and I started yeah. when I was 12. So before that, I was a young kid who likes basketball, played basketball. Yeah. I played baseball and other stuff like that. And to be honest, I was, I was shy, a little, a little shy. And NBA Buzz helped me kind of grow out of my shell because I'm in constant communication with people on a daily basis. And now I'm in front of the camera all the time. Definitely. Like, I, I'm 22, so I'm relatively young as well. I'm just starting my own, um, I guess, like my hoops media entity. And so, um, and so, like, when did you know this was it? And what was your big moment? Like, are you, I, I can imagine you're monetizing this in some capacity. So it's like, uh, I don't want to work a job. I think I just want to go hoops full time. Yeah, well, to start at the end of your statement, this isn't even really a full time job at the moment. I'm still going into a career in journalism. So doing this part time is just enough for me. And it's perfect money wise. And, you know, every, how it's treating me. But back to the first question, when I knew it was a real and it was really growing crazy was i would say when i hit probably a hundred thousand followers probably two years in wow 100, followers uh i start seeing some players re uh reposting my stuff i remember tracy mcgrady back in like 2014 posted something and he was my favorite player so i was freaking out about that one then the move to instagram on here of course really made me get in touch with all these athletes and I have so many NBA followers, uh, current players and former players that that made the reality be like, wow, this is awesome. Really? So where did you go to college at? Are you in college right now? Yeah, I'm in college. So I'm from New York. You probably tell from my accent. Yeah. I, uh, I go to LIU, which is Long Island University. Yeah. I'm Long Island. Do you, work, a journalism do, major. do you work with any of the basketball team in any capacity? What, what's that I didn't hear? You? Do you work with any of their basketball team in any capacity? Yep. I am the color commentator for the basketball team. Um, wow. There is a merge between LIU Post and LIU Brooklyn. So now we're officially just LIU. So I travel into Brooklyn for every home game and announce those basketball games in the winter. Not sure what's going to happen this year with COVID. But, yeah, it was a great experience. Uh, I saw LaMelo Ball at one game last really? year because yeah. – his manager's son is on the team, Jermaine Jackson Jr. Yeah. So that that was pretty awesome. That's great. So what advice would you give to me as I grow my own entity? And, you know, because I'm starting from ground zero. No no big – well, I got support, but no big support. No, you know, everything is off the cuff. Like, what would you – Yeah, I'm, that's, that's how I started. And it's just a consistent grind. And keep doing this. You bringing people onto your show, interviewing people, spreading their content mm -hmm. will – We'll just double the amount of eyes seeing your stuff because I'm going to share your, me on your podcast right now, your yeah. Instagram live, and it's just going to gain like wildfire. So keep this up, stay consistent, and make original content that people want to see, and you should yeah. be good from there. Yeah, because I've learned I don't want to live off of interviews, you know what I mean? I want to make my own content because I do, I do a segment called Bubble Talk, which is essentially about the bubble, and so I, like, I, I want to live off of my own body of work. But if you live and die off of interviews, man, you'll be – gone just like that because you can't land an interview 100 percent true 100 percent true because i try to keep myself uh well-rounded you mm -hmm. know i have nba buzz i post on that i do the interviews i post some other things on youtube like uh you know those kind of videos that you see on youtube of telling a story about nba players or something like that just to keep it fresh <clears throat> and and to diversify what i'm putting out there yeah 
Definitely. So I guess um kind of know who you are, but just a little bit of hoop talk. You want to pick your brains on certain things. Obviously, the Lakers in Miami game one of the finals tonight. Do you see Miami taking this game to game seven? To a game seven? Mm. No, but I see Miami fight. I see either I, – I see Lakers winning 4-2. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't think the Heat are going to go down easy. I don't really see any blowouts because mm-hmm. sometimes the Lakers could be inconsistent from three while Miami – Danny Green. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Danny Green, Contavious Caldwell Pope, even though Caldwell Pope had a good Western Conference Finals. Yeah. Um, they can be spotty from three while Miami – could just rain threes whenever they want. So that will help Miami get into those games with the Lakers. And the big matchup I can't wait to see is AD versus Bam. You know? Yeah, I think if – yeah. I think if Bam – if if Bam, like, emerges, like – and one thing about the NBA, it just takes a few games to kind of switch that narrative. So if Bam – let's just say that Miami Heat wins and Bam really emerges – Man, I'm talking about, man, just everything. His whole trajectory is going to change. He's for sure going to be an all-star. Yep. You know the politics work. You know, Bam, if Bam emerges this series, he's going to be an all-star. This can be off-the-court money. So this, this is bigger than basketball in some respects. Just like a few games could change your whole narrative. And Bam's already on the upward trajectory. But if Bam really shows out tonight. Yeah, yeah I agree. And I just posted on NBA Buzz a comparison of AD stats and Bam stats. And people mm-hmm. are saying AD is going to eat Bam up and that AD is on a completely different level than Bam. And I just responded, hey, we're going to have to see this finals, you know, if Bam is about that and if he's the real deal. And I think he is. I really think so. Yeah, I definitely think so, too. And what's interesting about this Miami team, I feel like they're – this is – you can make a movie out of this. Duncan Robinson, did you see the – um? was you the one that posted the text he got from the guy? Yeah. About, I think he thought so, – so talk about that. And just Yeah, you know. I mean – that, that one kind of viral on social media, and I just picked up on it. But a writer from The Ringer posted a text message he got from Duncan Robinson in 2017, I believe, mm-hmm. who was just a regular Michigan basketball player. Mm-hmm. And uh, he thought his career was – his basketball career was ending, and he was looking into becoming a media member in some way and getting a job in that field. And, of course, here we are, undrafted. Now he's a flamethrower in the league from three. And as you said, Duncan Robinson, Jimmy Butler had a rough path. Uh, Kendrick Nunn undrafted. There's just so many guys over there who are just dogs and just underrated and underdogs. So what, what could you say to those? I know you got a lot of people that's um, in the NBA. So you may have some not-so-prominent players. What can you say to those who took an unconventional journey to get to the NBA? Because I know it's probably, it's probably a, guy, a couple of guys who – undrafted or whatever who follow you and they just want some motivation. Like, hey, listen, my path was unconventional. But like, what yeah. can you say to those people and just speak about taking different ways to the top? I mean, I think t- to cover what you just asked is just to put it in a life perspective that everybody has their own path. And if you believe that, whatever way you turn will eventually lead you there if you stay humble, consistent, right. and you're resilient. Just look at Duncan Robinson. He thought his career was going to end. And then I'm sure he had a great workout with the Heat or whoever saw him and picked him up. So all those players who follow me who see that stuff take those posts as motivation when I post yeah. Kendrick Nunn stats, uh, Duncan Robinson, and, you know, whoever else. Yeah, because I'm not going to lie. I not only looked at it, I went to Google and I just typed it in and I read it multiple times. I embraced it because it's like, man, like, who would have ever thought? I could, I, I could imagine him in Michigan saying, I'm going to play in the NBA and be an integral part of a championship team. They were like, okay, you might get a few years overseas, and that's, that's it for you. Go try the media thing. But to now be an integral part of what you call a championship and historic team speaks volumes to that statement you just said. Exactly. And throughout my life, my, my grandfather has always told me, you create your own luck. So if you put yourself in certain situations and if you really work hard, you're – you're gaining luck, you know, whatever luck may be, the luck is coming your way because you're putting in the work. And I've been living, I've been living my life like that, trying to get lucky and working hard enough so that luck comes in. Yeah, so um, I guess, like, seeing a vision is a big thing. So whatever times you would doubt it, like, inside buzz might not be it. Let me just go ahead and just kind of do something a little bit regular. So were there every times like that? Uh. Yeah, there were definitely some times in NBA buzz where I was not necessarily hitting roadblocks, but 
I, I wasn't really developing new ideas. No, I wasn't losing faith in it. I was just getting a little bored. And mm -hmm. I just, I kept just grinding through and times got better. And mm -hmm. I started inside buzz and this really got the fire under my butt mm -hmm. lighting hot again. And, you know, I'm just working as hard as ever right now. And inside buzz, no, I never really had any doubts because I knew I'm starting from the ground up too. So yeah. however far I get is better than where I was without a show. So Yeah, definitely. So I realized, well, so really this whole thing was to kind of bring light to you and what you do. And really, I just maybe had two more basketball questions and we could just cut it. So one of the questions I want... Talk, I'll talk for as long as you want. I'm, I'm having a great time. So um, Toronto Raptors, they obviously got put out by Boston. But I said Toronto, their ascension in this, in, in the bubble, it solidifies three things. Masai Ujiri is a genius one. Yep. Nick Nurse is the coach of the year, too. And I believe in free agency, Fred Van Vliet can negotiate in Toronto for more than $30 million annually. So what do you think about I, I love the I love the, the Toronto Raptors and Masai Ujiri's genius to spot players. And this is another this is another team that has a competitive advantage in their development. So I believe every, every NBA team has a competitive advantage. The Lakers and just their allure of the dynasty. I think that Miami, their development track is their competitive advantage. The Raptors, their competitive advantage is development. And I believe teams like the Warriors and the Bulls, their unique competitive advantage is their their way to maneuver with the salary cap and free agency and asking star guys to take less for the betterment of the team. But just getting back for um, Fred, what do you think about Fred Van Vliet negotiating for more than $30 million annually? It's a lot of money, but I think he's worth it. He... He he was kind of everything. Him and Lowry were everything in the playoffs in the bubble for them. Pascal Siakam kind of wasn't there as much as you think he would be. And that's where Van Fleet stepped up. And he's becoming a fan favorite. And I don't think they want to lose him because he's still young. He's still hungry. And he's a big bucket getter whenever you may need it. So I I think they're going to pay him. Yeah, me too. Um, I don't want him to walk to New York in free agency. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I think... I think he's destined to be a Raptor. I think he should stay out there. And he was on that championship team. He he really took a bigger role this past season. And I want to see where else he could go. I don't want – I love the Knicks. I'm a fan. I don't want him to come down here and potentially waste his, his abilities. Yeah, and, he, and I think he's about to enter his prime maybe next year or the year after. I don't want – I don't want no problem. I don't want no discrepancies. But for, I think OG Ananobi is another one who can negotiate a pretty – I'm thinking four for 85, like a Mal what Malcolm Brogdon did, or probably a little bit more than that, probably close to 100 million. Maybe there's too much for OG Ananobi, but I feel he's really on the rise. Really? I, I think he's on the rise. I don't know about that. I think he needs, if he steps up big next season, yeah, he had a good bubble and a good postseason, but yeah. I think full season stretch plus another good playoffs will maybe get him that. Definitely. And so what, so what you're saying is the bubble kind of brought out some things and some players, but you want to see it happen in real time. Like a TJ Warren yeah. giving you 53, you're like, will that happen in a in an NBA environment? Or, you know, some certain guys just stepping up. Like Jamal Murray. They say Jamal Murray is just this is bubble. This is bubble like play, but will he do this in the thing? Well, I think we're watching the emergence of a really big star here in Jamal Murray. Yeah. I think it it's gonna change depending on the players, but if you want to take up Murray, I think that fire. That fire is lit under him now. He wants to play like this every single night he steps on the court. I think this kind of – this Murray will be back in the regular season next year. Yeah. Um, and with the Nuggets, uh, Mike Malone and those guys definitely deserve some love as far yes, as uh, – You got to give them love because of how young they are. They only have yeah. two players, uh, Plumlee and Millsap, over 30. The rest of them are so young. MPJ is going to be phenomenal. You know, he was uh, – a little inconsistent in the bubble in the postseason, but him, Bol Bol, once they develop around uh, Jamal and Jokic, they're going to be scary. Scarier. And the complimentary guys like the Monte Morris and the, and the Torrey Craigs. And Monte Morris was the 51st pick in the draft. Torrey yeah. Craig was um, went undrafted at a USC upstate. He went to the NBL just to come back to the NBA for the summer league in Denver. And obviously he, he went from a two-way to a standard. And there's a chance he gets paid really well this summer. Got got to give credit. He was, uh, he was hitting a lot of big buckets, Monte Morris. We good? Yeah, yeah, it went out a little. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Somebody was calling me. Um, did, but did you see about 
about Monte Morris? Yeah, 54th pick. I think he would came out of Iowa State. If yep. I'm not. He uh, he's a good bench piece for them, man. He was hitting a lot of key threes and big mid range shots in the in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm kind of sad they went out how they did, but that um, I just feel like who the, I feel like Miami was better. Miami was better. Mm-hmm. Wait, no, the Lakers. My bad. My mind's all over the place. They played the Lakers. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just thinking so it's much. Good. It's all good. Um, but. I know you got some things to do, man, but is there anything you want to shout out? Is there anything you're doing soon that you want people to know about? Uh, an ESPN podcast may or may not be on its way that I'm going to be featured in. So sure. when I put that out there, I need all the support I could get. And uh, other than that, keep tuning in to Inside Buzz. Mm-hmm. Uh, check out NBA Buzz on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And just check me out in general, at Mikey Domegala, and see what's going on, what I do on a daily basis. So, man, I appreciate you having me on. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, man, for your time, man. You have a great rest of your day, man. You too. All right, man.